how are we doing people today's video is going to be really easy and op rune farms aka elden ring souls as well as the big daddy rune farm that will make it so most builds won't need to worry about rune farming again i'm going to be explaining a few common rune related things before we dive into the video sometimes you'll notice the erd tree's golden leaves are scattering through the air this actually has an effect on your rune gain supposedly it's along the lines of four to five percent extra runes per kill on top of this, you might also come across some enemies that have gold glowing eyes. Prioritizing them will net you five times the amount that they're usually worth in runes. Seemingly aside from bosses, this golden eye status can affect every enemy you find, no matter their eye having status. There is also a consumable in game, which you can either find around the world or craft called the golden pickled foul foot. Using one will result in a 30% rune gain for a duration of three minutes. This makes it the single most important rune gathering item in game. The easiest one to find from the start of the game is to run to the left from the first step, Lost Grace. Find the ledge and crumble building below, make your way to the beach, and head again to the left. Towards the end, you'll come across a few skelly bros and a golden pickled fowl foot on the ground. To craft them, however, you'll need the Missionary's Cookbook 2. This is sold in Patch's shop alongside three golden pickled fowl feet. If you haven't bought it yet, buy the crafting kit from Kale also at the Church of Ella. Patches can be found in Murkwater Cove, located here. And when you get here for the first time, you'll be invaded by Bloody Finger Nerigus. Halfway through, an NPC will summon in to defend you. Kill the bloody finger Nerigus. And head into the cave. Grab the Lost Grace. Keep to the right wall until you find a passage with gold fog. In here, Patches will challenge you to a boss fight, but will cower away and he'll lose after about half his health has been tripped away. If you rest at a Lost Grace and come back, he will have set up shop and happily accepts your runes. Crafting gold pickled fowl feet is actually very straightforward. They require three rower fruit, which are one of the most common crafting items you'll find around the world. A four-toed fowl foot dropped by a guillemot, the penguin-esque avian wildlife you might have stumbled upon. A good route for killing these guys is here and like so. Conversely, a silver pickled fowl foot will go well for the increased item drop. And finally, one gold firefly. These guys are found around the minor erd trees, generally close to water. Uh, so this applies to everything that you farm, but resting in a lost grace resets resources and wildlife. Now we have the basics under our belts. Here are five very easy and very lucrative ways to earn big injections of runes right from the start of the game. To start, I'm going to be building upon my last video. So if you haven't seen that, link in the description. This assumes you have access to the Faroom Great Bridge Lost Grace. This area is populated by Vulgar Militia. They are little dudes who will all but one hit you, so you should never take on more than one at once. Uh, they do have a big flaw in their offense. If they are hit by just about any weapon, uh, mid attack or anything like that, they will be interrupted. They also have very low poise, so they're opened up to Vistrals every few attacks. Altogether, an easy enemy even for a fresh character to deal with. Best of all, they're worth just over about a thousand runes each, making for a very easy farming spot. Now for the next tier up. From the Faroom Great Bridge, Lost Grace, make your way forward a little and lean towards the right, up a slight incline. Continue forward in the eastern cardinal direction until you come to a cliffside. If you look down, you'll see a root, drop down and hop to the ground. Stay to the right side of the path as there'll be caltropes that poison if you walk on them. Head to the right towards another bridge. If you're, uh, if you're here at night, there will be a Knight's Cavalry boss. Just over the bridge, you'll spot a tower with a Lost Grace at its base. This is Lenny's Rise. Not sure if that's Lenny or Lene. I'm going to stick with Lenny though. 
From Lenny's rise, if you follow the path down, maintaining yourself on Torrent and sticking to the left, you'll notice a ramp to the left. Just after you pass this ramp, a giant stone ball will spawn. This is actually an enemy and it's worth 2,000 runes a pop. Anticipate his spawn, lock on and swoop around in front of the enemy. Ride back up the path, keeping to your left. This will cause Ball Man to shoot off the edge and die. Importantly, keep the lock on until the ball fully disappears over the ledge and the lock on is lost, ensuring you're awarded the runes. This once again has a barrier to entry that is almost negligent. Easy to ride back up or teleport to Lenny's Rise, pop yourself down for a respawn. There is also another enemy that is pretty much under the ball man uh, and it's easy to abuse as well further down the path, but in testing the difference in time isn't really that noticeable. But Lav, you might say, that's fucking boring. I want some big dick rune energy I can shove down Melania's throat. Well, I got you. These next three methods benefit greatly from gold pickled foul feet. From Lenny's rise, you'll have noticed the bridge and quite potentially the knight's cavalry that smokes in the parking lot at night. If you jump on the spiritual successor to Roach and bait the boss across the bridge, making sure he's almost trimming your pube hairs with his axe and continue up this path and hill, making sure a vulgar militia man doesn't knock you flying, but making sure you pop as many caltropes full of poison on the ground, you'll notice the ammo kid behind you will become poison. Nothing too shocking about this. What is shocking, however, is if you continue up the hill until you've seen a line of pollution protesting vulgar militia and head to the left, the health bar of the Knight's Cavalry will disappear and if all goes well, shortly after he will in fact suddenly die. Congratulations, you just bug abused. But it will award you around 42,000 runes. Of course, this will be a huge bump to your level and I suggest pumping yourself up to about 30 Vigor. We aren't done yet though, with the borderline game breaking bug abuse. Next method will require a little bit of a setup, but it's thoroughly worth it. We need ourselves a bleed weapon and the easiest way is the Ucha Katana. Whilst not actually a top tier bleed weapon, it is really fast and easily procured. Back in Limgrave, we're going to be heading to a catacomb called Death Touch Catacomb, located here on the map. Inside catacombs are an upgrade material called Gravewort. These are used in upgrading summons, but right now we're just concerned with fighting the Ujra Katana. So from the gate front ruins Lost Grace, head in through the gate, ignoring the enemies and giant that drops down, through the battlements placed along the road and following up to an Erd Tree Sprout. Make sure to grab the seed for more fast uses. Up ahead will be a Lost Grace next to a shack. Activate the Lost Grace, head roughly east down a dirt path, avoiding enemies as usual. You'll see another shack and another Lost Grace, also activate that one. Continue down the dirt path and you'll see a quite large enemy encampment. Charge through, sneak around or altogether avoid it, continue down the path, it doesn't really matter. The path will dip down and another bridge will lay ahead with a pumpkin knight enemy meandering around. Activate the Lost Grace located just before it. Head back up the path and you'll notice a right hand cliff wall that actually splits off into another plateau. Turn up the makeshift path and follow the left hand wall to find death touch catacombs. Inside will be yet another Lost Grace, activate it and prepare yourself to dodge a lot of skeletons. Just keep moving through though. From the Lost Grace, go forward until you see a door then turn left down a tunnel until you see a ledge with stairs, drop down the ledge and turn around to go underneath it. To your immediate left will be an unlit tunnel sporting a grave ward at the end of it. From the grave ward room, go left again and in another large room and again immediately in front of you will be a corpse and an item. You are now a proud owner of a Uchi Katana. Its stats and moveset are a healthy staple of the Souls games, so don't be afraid to use it beyond our current use case, it is a worthy, worthy choice. The next step is teleporting to the Faroon Great Bridge Lost Grace. Now we're going to be turning around and facing the dragon on the bridge and we're going to tell him this is our bridge and not his, like a man son. Actually we're going to run past him scared and hope he doesn't involuntarily jerk in the wrong way uh, and turn us into a pink mist. Down the path you'll see a mine erd tree. You may not know this but they all have a guardian boss protecting them. So we're going to head to the left side of the tree towards an air vent jumping on it using torrent and being blasted upwards into a third boss fight in 15 seconds. Can you tell this is a late to end game area yet? Now this is a different type of boss however, and since we entered this way he can't actually hit us, nor his minor dragon minions. Nestle yourself just past his back leg but before his wing and make yourself at home like the nutrient leeching tick that you are. Why a bleed weapon you may have asked? Well, hemorrhage is a debuff that builds up and when it fills it will do a percentage of damage. 
This big boy has near 100k health, resulting in you bleeding him for approximately 13.5k damage per full meter. Tasty. Get Elder Dragon Grail to a very low amount of health and pop a gold pickled fowl foot for a delicious 30% extra runes. He himself drops 50,000 runes and his minions drop 5,500 apiece. It can differ a lot, but it's a minimum of 100k runes for about 5 minutes of whacking pasty white scales. Combined with the Knight's Cavalry boss, you'll be sitting at a very respectable level of approximately 40, all for about 30 minutes or less work. I'd also recommend turning around after the Elden Dragon kill and grabbing the Fort Farrath Lost Grace. And what if I told you we aren't done? What if there was a method so overpowered it is definitely game breaking and it's fully intended? Would you believe it has to do with our pasty face friend from the first steps Lost Grace? I mean, you probably would I guess. This will take a little bit to gain access to and you'll need to do PvP a minimum of three times when I lose. Additionally, Godric the Grafted has to have been defeated. I won't be covering in this video how to do that, but your already gained runes will surely be enough to boost you past that fire. Also, stock up on arrows from any merchant and bring a longbow. The longbow is with the twin maidens at round table hold. But afterwards, your rune snorting addiction will no longer be a problem. You may or may not remember Whiteface Vare, but he's the first non-hostile NPC you come across in your Elden Ring adventure. He has a questline associated with him, but it also serves as the entry to PvP for Elden Ring. So you want to return to your first meeting place with Varro. That's the first step Lost Grace. Speak to him, exhaust his dialogue, he'll most likely say stuff along the lines of you're a maidenless cuck, etc, etc. Or comment on how you're invited to Round Table Hold. In either case, the next step is defeating Godric the Grafted in Stormvale Castle. Now you want to head to the back of Stormvale and set your sights on Lernia of the Lakes. Make your way down the hill to the first Lost Grace, Lake Shore. Grab the map piece for the area slightly down the path from the side of Grace and follow a mostly north direction from the Grace. Here's a rough point of reference. You'll stumble across a massive sunken city area. In front of you should be another Lost Grace to sit at. From the city, strike it out almost straight west and you'll hit a large building chunk. On top is a very handily placed side of Lost Grace. Continue west and you'll find yourself galloping up to a large rock outcropping and a church will be sitting on the middle of it. Try not to venture inside or you'll most likely get raped. But at the entrance will be our friend and he will congratulate us on Best and Godric and ask us whether we are weirded out by everything. Say yes and he will hand you some fingers. Stable individual. These are the consumable PvP invasion item for Elden Ring. So now to progress his quest, we have to use three fingers. I know, this room farm is involved, but it is so good. You just use them from your inventory and go annoy someone in their world. Win or die, or just kill yourself, whatever you need to do. Three fingers later, return to Whiteface Vare at the Rose Church. He will be just overjoyed you're a little fucking weirdo like him and tell you to take a piece of cloth and soak it in maiden blood. Lucky for us, we already know where to go from a fever dream. Head to the Four Belfries. This is approximately located here, far northwest of Rose Church. Up the top will be a grace, a chest containing an imbued sword key, a portal slightly down the hill requiring said imbued sword key. Venture in, return to the chapel you spawned in. You may need to fight Grafted Sign if you didn't kill it during the opening sequence. You shouldn't be a threat if you're able to kill Godric though. Find the maiden's body and soak the cloth. Now return to Whiteface Vare and he'll embrace you like a brother from another mother asking you if you for real reals like him before chopping off one of your fingies. Nice hand, dickhead. Speak to him again for the item we've come all this way for, the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. This teleports us to Mogwa's Audience Grounds. This place will turn you inside out and use your bloody remains as a flashlight. Don't fuck around and find out. When you spawn in, turn around and follow my path through this hellscape. Roughly through the trees, past the big red man and his two skelly bros, Hit the white wall and turn right into the period pond. Moving forward until you're traveling right along another wall. Past the openings, left and right, straight ahead until you come up to an incline. One million scary enemies and noises later, you'll end up on top of a lost grace. Don't be like me and not see it the first time. Sit down and prepare yourself for glory. Now, if you look down over the cliff, you'll see a period pond with some birds, I guess, wandering around and our target is the closest bird. Aim in through the trees and send an arrow straight into his arsehole. He'll be so outraged, he'll send himself careening off the edge of the cliff, resulting in 11,000 runes for you to fuel your addiction with. 
simply sit down at the grace and repeat. This can be escalated to 13,000 runes a pot with a gold pickled foul foot. At 10 seconds of bird kill, this is 78,000 runes a minute or 4.7 million runes an hour. I haven't been totally forthcoming about the true extent of this rune farm, mainly because there is another 20% extra runes you could be earning, but it will take a decently leveled character or co-op buddy's help. Of course, what I'm talking about is the Golden Scarab Talisman. I'd recommend leveling a little before going for this. It's located in Kaled and requires a boss kill in that region. You want to start at the Fort Farrath side of Grace. Head generally west along the cliffside, past a few angry dragons, stick to the left side of the flame wall. You'll notice an Everjail to your far left to keep heading straight until you come to a ravine. This area, abandoned cave, can only be entered from the west side. So you've got to hop over on torrent, turn around and pop down to a ledge. You'll see the cave entrance and a few routes. Aim for the routes and jump for the entrance. Once inside, grab the Lost Grace, rest up and prepare for a possibly annoying run to the boss. If you have the Ash of War quick step or a dagger with that skill innately, it will help for portions of this area. It is full of Scarlet Rot, this game's version of Toxic. Jump down to the left and walk forward to the Dead Iron Maiden. Rest here if you need to. Move forward to the left of the Iron Maiden and then hang a hard right back around the corner until you come to the edge of a ledge with a poison enemy below you and a tunnel behind him. Follow this through past a rat and another poison enemy up a ledge into a few more rats leaning hard to the right. You'll enter a room with a Scarlet Rot version of the giant plant enemies. Aiming straight ahead towards a ledge up above you, you'll see a sand incline with dead Iron Maidens littered through it. Follow it up and pop up onto the ledge, heading into the tunnel and ignoring the enemies. Into the right will be the boss. This is a dual fight, so summons and co-op partners are a big help. A low level would definitely struggle with this fight, so leveling beforehand is almost a must. Your reward though is precious indeed. A talisman that rewards you with 20% extra runes. Together with the gold pickled foul foot, this results in a whopping 50% extra runes per kill. You are now richer than God himself and are actually able to fight God too. That wraps up this giant video for now. I hope you learned a thing or two. Thanks for watching and don't forget to drop a sub. Check me out on Twitch also. Link in the description.